Hello, everybody. This August 12th meeting of the Board of Trustees for the Burleson Independent School District is now called to order at 5.30 p.m. This meeting was duly posted according to legal requirements and a quorum is present. And thank all of you for being here. Ashley, do we have any cards for open forum? Then we are going to adjourn into closed session at 5.30 for the purpose of consideration of matters for which closed sessions are authorized by Title V, Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, Sections .071 through .084, whereupon the superintendent, at the request of the president of the Board of Trustees, will present for the board's consideration or discussion the following matters. A, consider teacher and or administrator employment or other appropriate personnel matters. B, deliberate a negotiated contract for a prospective gift or donation. C, deliberate the use of security personnel devices and or audits, including the intruder detection audit. D, deliberate a matter regarding a student or student discipline. E, deliberation regarding real property. And F, consultation with their attorney. So at this time, we will adjourn into closed session. Thank you. Hit it hard. Hey, somebody have a laser again. pointer that can... <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, all right. Thank you all for being here this evening. The Board of Trustees of the Burleson Independent School District will reconvene to open session at 6.30 p.m. We have one item to take care of from the closed session. I recommend that the Board of Trustees grant the Board President the authority to approve new hires between now and the next regular meeting in September. The Board will consider ratifying those hires at the next meeting. Can I please have a motion? Sean, in a second. Michael, all in favor? Any opposed? I see none opposed. The motion carries. And if you all would join me, we would like to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one, and indivisible. And now, board members, if we could please adopt our agenda. agenda. So, I recommend the Board of Trustees adopt the order of items for the August 12, 2024 agenda as presented. Brian, in a second. Pat, all in favor? Any opposed? I see none opposed. The motion passes. And now it's time for our special recognition. Good evening, everyone. Tonight we have a special, special recognition. So I'm going to begin by turning it over to Dr. Jimerson. Thank you, Dr. Hill. Well, if y'all haven't noticed, uh, we, we, we're celebrating a whole lot of kids tonight, but we've got one kid that has just returned from the Olympic Games. And uh, I was visiting with him. I was visiting with his, his mother and father. And, uh, of course, Sean Miner coached him, I think, a little bit when he growing up a little bit or tried to. <laughs> and, and matter of fact, Sean said earlier, said, you're a pretty good third baseman, as I recall. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, for those of you who know, Connor Prince is a 2018 graduate of Centennial High School. He was one. He was a, a member of our clay shooting team at Centennial. What he, you may not, I don't know if you remember, <laughs> being recognized for that. Do you remember that? I don't. Actually. I don't. I think we have some evidence somewhere. Do we have a pic or something that we can put up there? Because I think you were on a billboard or something. Oh, there it is. Oh, that one. <laughs> Those folks right there went to uh, the state competition. As I recall, you got third as a team, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that sounds right. I don't remember I being think so. it's I think it's right, Connor. Just go with me here. Yeah, that works. I'm, I'm cool with that. <laughs> go with, we'll update Wikipedia later. Perfect. <laughs> How does it feel to have a Wikipedia page? Uh, kind of crazy, to be honest with I you. I cannot <laughs> imagine. I did go and looked up this guy. First of all, number one, we as a district are so proud of you and for you. We were talking earlier, cannot imagine 
the level of grit, determination, the hours that you must have put in. I don't know what your shoulder looks like at the end of a day, but uh, for, the, for those of you who are wondering who this guy is, this is the United States silver medalist from the Paris Games in, is it skeet shooting? Skeet shooting. Skeet shooting. I want to get that right because I learned there's multiple terms now. There is. There's clay, trap, skeet. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> I've learned a lot, but this guy is a master of his craft. You are amazing. We're so proud of you and for you. Um, he was a member of the 2018. What we also found was, and we were just talking about this, he didn't shoot prior to coming to high school. And he joined the clay shooting team at Centennial High School. And by the time I think you said you were a junior in high school, yes, he knew he had talent, a love, a passion, and decided he was going to make a run and eventually make the United States Olympic team. And from what I hear, making the United States Olympic team is about the hardest thing you could do. It's tough. <laughs> I have heard that. And you did it. And you went and you competed and you won. Connor, we're so proud of you. Thank you. And I want to tell you thank you for coming and sharing with us and letting us celebrate you. Now, we have something for you that we would like to honor you with, if that's okay. Oh, First of all, will you show the folks your silver medal? Sure. Thank you. I talk a lot, <laughs> but I'm so excited. And such a good kid, too. That's what I love. And you still have that great sense of humility. <laughs> I love that. By the way, lots of fam fr friends and family. We've seen uh, former teammates, people supporting uh, the, the, the clay shooting team. We see a lot of our pathway folks here. A lot of fun folks. But uh, we're going to take pictures in just a minute. But right now, what I'd like to do, I'm going to ask the board to come down front. We have a crystal plaque that we would like to present to you, and I'm going to ask the board president to please present that. So if y'all would join me down front and let us do that. If you want to join. <laughs> yeah, y'all might be in back row. <laughs> and then, Connor, I don't know, you want to put your medal?
Ouch. Is that okay? Hey, can we get one of the principals, the principals yes, of the schools that he went to? Come on, Andre. You know, I'm shy. I'm shy. He's going straight. <laughs> to turn it over. I think uh, mascots, thank you for being here. <laughs> for others to be able to see the rest of the meeting, I think, yes. And we're going to bring up... Uh, and mascots, thank you for being here. <laughs> Hi. privilege to be able to stand up here and once again celebrate the amazing things that our students are doing in BISD and much of that is due to the support of the school board so we thank you first and foremost for that now next I'm going to turn it over to two of our FFA advisors how are you I'm Mackenzie Allen um, and I'm Kayla Obush um, tonight we get to the opportunity to recognize our Lone Star degree recipients the Texas FFA loan ooh, thank you <laughs> <laughs> The Texas FFA Lone Star Degree is a prestigious award, award honor awarded to FFA members who have demonstrated outstanding leadership, commitment, and achievements in their FFA career. It is the highest degree an FFA member can earn at the state level, representing a culmination of years of dedication and hard work. So to qualify for these uh, degrees, students much, must meet several criteria, including being an active member for at least three years, holding a significant leadership role within the chapter, maintaining a record book showcasing their achievements, projects, and involvement, demonstrating progress in their supervised agriculture experiences, maintain good academic standing, and receive recommendations from FFA advisors and community leaders. Recognizing students with a Lone Star degree highlights their exceptional commitment to agricultural education and leadership. It is a momentous achievement that reflects their dedication and contributions to the FFA and their communities. From Burleson FFA, Burleson High School, I would like to recognize Riley McNeely. <laughs> and also Cameron Humphreys. I don't know what we're doing. I'm always the last to know these things. We're taking pictures of people. Can we take two steps this way, All 
Parents, no? Congratulations. Um, and so, and from Centennial FFA, we actually have five. Um, two of them were seniors and just are actually at their college orientation this week, so they could not make it. But we have Jake Recruit. <laughs> Emma McCarthy. And McKenna Smiley. Jonathan Smith from Game Development Design School to discuss TSA. Technology Student Association is a national student organization created to develop skills in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and business education. The aim of TSA is to develop leadership, academic, and business management skills in the workplace among students and leaders within the community. Our students have used TSA competition and organization to hone in on skills they have that they would like to develop while learning new skills as they go. These students have put in tremendous effort on both the state and national level. While we unfortunately did not place the national level, these students have acquired some amazing experiences and were able to participate in a competition of over 10,000. We'll give recognition for their state uh, accolades. Um, for our high school national competitors, we had for board game and solar sprint and webmaster, Olivia Cass and Hayden Rogstad. <laughs> we doing one team at a time or do we want to do all of them? Together. All of them together, one big group? Yes. Got it, perfect. There's a lot, that's probably why. <laughs> All right, uh, for Technology Bowl, we have Palin Estrada, Chase Shrywise, and Nate Wixon. <laughs> State Photography, we have Gracie Coolidge. <laughs> she won first for Color, Aerial Perspective, Experienced, Color Marine, Color Special Effects, Single Effect Experienced, and Black and White Special Effects. She also got second for Color Action and Motion Animal, and Color Special Effects 3 or more. Um, it was a lot, indeed. She did very well, yes. Um, for video game design, we have uh, first at state and national competitors, Ellie Hickman, Kira Ferdinand, and Sabella Moreno. And then children's stories, that was second at state and national competitors, Ellie Hickman, Sophia Spahn, Nicole Rashke, and Sabella Moreno. <laughs> For cybersecurity, Kira Ferdinand. For problem, yeah, sure. Isn't it? <laughs> For problem solving, Nicole Rashke and Sabella Moreno. And then lastly, for state photography, um, third place, Kira Ferdinand for black and white architecture. Oh, oh my goodness, I am so sorry. Well, there were so many. There were so many. Um, and, uh, oh, Zoe, what did we get? I tell you my events. Yes, tell me your events because I am a bad human right now. Okay. Prepared speech, cybersecurity, I did um, color macro and I got second place, second place in black and white macro, 10th place in color landscape, third place in color portrait photography, and first place in color special effects photography. <laughs> Big 
groups. So we need to make two rows. Taller. There we go. And, and please find a window so you can make sure we see you. Um, what are we doing? Yeah, we're all uneven. Because you have all those medals we need to display. We need to make sure we can see you, so do that below the window there. Can we bring one over here? Yeah. 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 Is that better? Yeah. Do you want to be up front? Okay. Everybody up front, people sit this way. Okay. Okay. Where do you want me? Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. This is like look right here. One, two, three. Well, they've already been taken care of. <laughs> Hey, well done. Now, we got school Wednesday. Be on time. <laughs> Thank y'all for being here. Thank you, parents, for coming. Thank you. All right, board members, if you all have comments to make, now is the time for that. House, oh, uh, with Connor Prince, I think somewhat known that he was due to get greatness because he also won world championships in 2019 and 2023 in the junior worlds and others for skeet and trap. So he's been very talented. Uh, can we ring it off because I got it here? Oh, cool. All right. World Championships, men, junior, skeet, team, silver. World Cup, 2023, I don't know what Rabat means, but he won gold. 2023, Rabat, mixed skeet, skeet team, gold. And 2024, Lanado, men's skeet, silver. Ju junior World Cup, 2019, <laughs> Seoul, men's skeet, gold. 2019, Seoul, men's skeet team, silver. This kid's been winning, and considering he just graduated high school in 18, so he won at the Junior World Cup, the World Championships, the World Cup, and now the Olympic Games. Uh, I will, uh, I'll go. <clears throat> I had the um, honor and privilege of attending Cougar Camp this week. That's right, Andre put on a really good deal. I, I, um, I'm always... Um, Wow, I'm talking. Really, Garen? I'm talking. <laughs> We're talking here. Jiminy Christmas. We're talking here, Garen. Wow. Oh. Oh, now I'm done. That's why we can't have nice things. Please continue, Brian. Thank you I'm very so much. Sorry. Yeah. I have yeah, I often get gonked. Anyway, yes I do. Um anyway, it was uh great to see um how excited our um our teachers are getting for kids to come back to school and it made a difference. Um, it was my first, it's my first middle schooler going to middle school. And uh, it make, it means a lot that um, our kids, our administration and our teachers are going out of their way to make our kids feel welcome in a huge transition like that. And so uh, I want to say thank you from a parent's perspective, but I also want to say really, really, really well done 
uh, from a board perspective. So great job. I just want to say, I just thought of this while ago, this is my 49th beginning of school. You know, counting my years in the in the classroom and as a principal and then on the board, and it's exciting every time. So just appreciate y'all so much and looking forward to the great things that's, that are continuing to happen in Burleson ISD. Okay. Nope. All right. It's now time for our first information item this evening with Tech Teach Program Update with Ms. Christy Strickland. Hi, Christy. Hello. Good evening, Dr. Jimerson and Board Trustees. I'm here tonight to give an update on Tech Teach in Burleson. Two years ago, BISD partnered with Texas Tech Education Department to bring a teacher preparation program here to Burleson where you can be a full-time tech student while never leaving Burleson. It's a rigorous program that is dedicated to growing fully certified and competent teachers through classwork, field experience, and a year-long student teaching assignment. We began in August 2022 with six candidates in cadre one who were eager albeit very nervous, to begin their journey of teaching. God, I remember that day. You were there. Did you see yourself? No, okay. it just <laughs> seems like yes. Oh, my God. Last August, each of these candidates was partnered with a mentor teacher for their year-long student teaching, and that was uh, those pictures were captured at convocation. Okay. And then they jumped in and participated in all teacher professional development and began their role as a teacher on the first day of school. I was in their classrooms almost weekly to ensure that they were implementing the, pro the proven instructional practices they had learned and guaranteeing that they were growing professionally. Last August, we added cadre number two with nine new students led by Beth Lane. Six of those candidates began their student teaching placement this past week. It was my great pleasure to attend the graduation of our first cadre last May as we all traveled to Lubbock. It was a little strange for them being on the campus. First time they'd ever stepped on the campus was for, for their graduation. Should I ask them, hey, what'd you think of Lubbock? <laughs> Don't answer that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kid no, I was kidding. I was totally kidding. I was totally kidding. <laughs> Okay, hey, hey, this is about them, not you, Kelly. Did y'all have fun? Yes, but I was ready to leave. Yes. <laughs> I hear that a lot. Yep. The moment we crossed the county line, I said, let's go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right with you, so. I'm thrilled <laughs> to announce that all five graduates are beginning their teaching career here in Burleson. And, and I want you to hear from a couple of these new teachers as they share uh, the most impactful part of the program. So y'all three come up here. And they have their school shirts on from convocation. We have Abby Vargas, Kayla Huerta, and Grace Toller. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> First of all, I just want to say thank you for letting Texas Tech be a part of Burleson ISD. I, as a first year teacher, feel prepared. I don't feel as nervous as I thought I would be. So I'm, I'm actually really excited to start this year. So thank you. I also want to thank y'all for letting Texas Tech be a part of Burleson. Um, and I just want to say how beneficial this program is. Every single teacher I've talked to always mentions to me that they wish their student teaching was all year like how we did. Um, because when they started their first year, they were so nervous. Like it was pretty much they would say it was a mess. But like Kayla said, like, I feel so prepared having already have like a year under my belt. Yes. Um, thank you so much for um, getting this program because I kid you not, I was weeks away from going to another school and then I heard uh, about this program and I was like, I'm not going to go here. Like, what are you kidding me? It was, well, it was at, in Waco at first and then I heard Okay, that's worse than Lubbock. 
<laughs> oh, sorry, Stacy. Oh, sorry, board president. <laughs> um, it was in Waco, and I was like, I'm not going to drive 45 minutes. Are you kidding me? And then um, Burleson adopted this program, and I was like, okay, maybe this is cool. And then I met with my advisor for tech, and she told us all about the program, and like. Um, not like, oh, well, you just need to join our program because of this and this and this. She told me, you are going to be learning this and this and this. You are going to be prepared for your career. And I said, okay, I'm doing it. <laughs> and um, it's the best decision I have ever made. I'm coming in to my first year of teaching feeling prepared. Am I an expert? No, but I am prepared and I'm ready to learn every day. So you ain't day. scared. I, well, I. Hold on. Let me. That is awesome. Let me, I can tell you my heart rate right now. Uh, I. Well, what did Brian Kane say about it this morning? So we're good. You got this. Exactly. Um, well, now I lost my train of thought. Um, but, I do that to people. I do it. Too. Yes. Uh, I just, I feel prepared and I'm ready to learn every single day now. Yes, thank you. So Grace is one of our um, homegrown, like from yes. elementary school. Um, yeah. And she's actually teaching at the school where she went to elementary school. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I'm doing first. I'm doing third, and I'm fourth. Yes. So we got we got the High Hawks, we got the Taylor Texans, and we got the Stribling Stars. Yes. So all represented. That's outstanding. Well, I'm so proud of you. I know you put in a lot of work. I know you. I appreciate the fact that you stuck to it, and uh, and then of course made it through the other side, and here you are, brand new teachers for Burleson ISD. So glad y'all are joining our team. Thank you. <laughs> So just one last thing, let's just let you know what's coming ahead. This fall, we will have 15 candidates um, in the program uh, with three more beginning their student teaching in January. And just as these girls have expressed, I want to say thank you for your support as we continue to grow our own teachers. And I will say, Christy, well done, because uh, Christy, uh, I was like, how many times have you tried to return on me? <laughs> Three. And each time I get in, I, I call her in and she knows it's coming. And I say, have I got an idea for you? And, uh, and every time she steps up to the new challenge. We, uh, when we started this program with Texas Tech, and I use the term we very loosely, when, uh, when we agreed to do it, she took the bull by the horns. And uh, that's the thing about, about Christy is when you need something started and done, She's a go-to person. I call she's a, she's a do-it person. And uh, she did, she dug in, and she helped to create that partnership and create uh, a, a program of learning for you all. And uh, so Christy, well done. Two years later, and you've got your first uh, homegrown, right here in Burleson, homegrown kiddos. You've got more coming, and then you got another group bigger than that. So well done, Christy, Thank you. well done. Thank you. Okay. I think I made her uncomfortable. Did I make you uncomfortable? No. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll make her. I'll make her uncomfortable because I remember when Christy first started, and she was dynamite from the from the beginning. So, uh, what a great opportunity that we're giving through what you have off, continued to offer for our district. Thank you. And next this evening is the Safety, Security, and Intruder Detection Audit Update with Mr. Steve Lug. Yes, sir. Oh, hi. <laughs> well, good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight I have a few safety and security updates to share with you all. Uh, this year, we're going to continue with the enhanced safety protocols that we put into place over the past few years and continue to make sure they're being followed with fidelity uh, on a daily basis. Our staff and students did a great job with our protocols last year. As you all know, TEA does random intruder detection audits throughout the year. And last year, all 18 campuses were audited and all 18 passed with no findings. Even though everyone did a great job last year, we can and will continue to get better and keep making improvements. Um, something new we're doing this year as an added layer of security is introducing a clear bag policy for all BISD athletic events. All the details um, around that for the, the policy, they're on the athletics website. 
That includes a graphic that shows exactly what is and is not allowed. It also got, has a frequently asked questions document. Um, Kevin's done a great job of putting together a communications plan to make sure that it doesn't catch anybody by surprise and we get that word out before people show up to our events. And when you get a purchase a ticket or get a ticket to uh, whatever event that you're going to online, that ticket has the policy on it and you have to actually click make sure that you're aware of the policy. Uh, and, and the primary reason for that is, is so people truly are aware before they get to their event that, that, uh, that we do have a clear back policy. Um, they've done a good job with that. That diagram is everywhere, including when you get the ticket. And, uh, and also, we've got a big game coming up in a couple of weeks. And uh, so we've got those graphics out. We're spreading the word. And we're going to have folks out in the parking lot reminding folks before they get from their vehicle to the gate, if they might have forgotten since it's a, a new thing, we're going to try to let them and remind them out in the parking lot. So if they don't have a clear bag, they can still leave their things in their vehicle if they need be. And uh, or get their bag and come on in. So we're going to try to be as customer friendly on this because it is new and we know that. But uh, but the good news is, is we have one fantastic community and uh, in our community always embraces things that are going to keep them and their students safe. And uh, we believe this extra added layer will continue to enhance our security. And uh, we're just doing our best to communicate that out. So thanks, Steve. Oh, thank you. Um, and then to ensure that all of our staff are well prepared and understand our safety and security protocols, we had our annual all staff health and safety training last week. Uh, the training included first aid, drug awareness training, um, civilian response to active shooter training, and then also our BISD specific safety and security protocols. This is a huge undertaking and uh, Courtney Peets did a great job on not only presenting but also taking the lead on planning and organizing this event. So thank you to Courtney, wherever you're at, there you are, <laughs> thank you. Then also thank you to uh, Scott Shehe, Sergeant Pilgrim, Officer Schaefer, Matt Arlette for those sessions that they led. And also want to thank the Burleson Police and Fire Departments for their uh, partnership and assistance in that day of training. And then for, throughout the school year, we're going to continue to make safety our top priority, do whatever it takes to keep our staff and our students safe every day. And we're looking forward to a great year. Thank you. All right. All right, board members. You should have received the consent agenda in your packet. If there are no questions or comments regarding that, I'd like a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda as presented. Jerry, in a second? Second. Ryan, all in favor? Any opposed? I see none opposed, the motion passes. And now it is time for our monthly financials with Ms. Brenda Mines. <coughs> Board members, Dr. Jimerson. I am here to get us to the finish line. I was going to maybe do like an Olympic theme song, but I thought, would that compare to what we've done earlier, like the financials getting to the end, you know, yes, exciting. Yeah. Well, we, did we did get a first rating. Superior. So um, anyway, I want to share with you, this is the end. Of, this will be the last financials for the 23-24 school year. Uh, this is June. So compared to last year, we're at $116 million. Just a reminder, we still have some state program revenue that we'll receive once we turn in our final ADA, teacher incentive allotment. We turn in our tax information that we receive, and then that decides how much the state will give us for our funding. So we still have a big payment that we'll get um, in September um, and through October, and so that will be updated once we receive those. And then our expenditures are at $127.1 million. Um, we'll do our payables through um, August and September, and so that number will change once we get to the end of September. For food service, revenue is at $7.2 million, uh, slightly down from last year. We know that's due to the federal program's revenue. And then our expenditures are at $8 million, $3,000. For debt service, uh, revenue is at $38.6 million. Uh, once again, state program revenues, I think they've already made an adjustment to that. We're at $4.7 million uh, once we get our final ADA, and they'll take the hold harm list into consideration for our tax revenues. Uh, that will adjust. And then our debt service uh, payment was at $31.2 million. Special revenue funds were at 62%. Uh, we do have a few that end uh, through, Sept uh, I'm sorry, through June, um, but the most of them go through September of 2024. So we'll continue to expend those through September. 
For child care, revenues at 996,000 um, and our expenditures at 932. Just a reminder, if you guys compared to last year, we did have the grant last year, so it looks like our revenues are lower and that's because we used a lot of our grant funding through that school year. Capital projects, which is oil and gas, uh, revenues at 936,000 through the year. Uh, our beginning balance, 13.6 million. Uh, ending balance through June 30th, so the end of the school year will be 14.61 million. Payments over 10,000. Uh, the list is in your packet that describes each check that was issued out. Um, up here is just a summary, the majority out of our 199 funds. We do have special revenue and then we have um, capital projects and our workers comp. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer those. And then our tax report, June collections, um, 175,000, 105 in M&O and 69,000 in debt service. Our total tax revenues uh, for the school year was 82.9 million. And then our quarterly investment report. So I'll just go straight to the graph because I know that's a lot of numbers. Um, our investment types, we do the pools. So we have Tex Pool and Lone Star. We try to diversify between the two. Uh, we also have Wells Fargo, which is our checking account and our safekeeping account. Um, so that's what we're at, just our quarterly ending at June 30th of 2024. If you have any questions. That's it, we made it. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Brenda. Thank you very much. And now we have two, two action items this evening. First up is Mr. Tom Dyer to consider TASB update 123, policy AF local and policy DNA local. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, just to call out the elephant in the room, <laughs> I would like to point out that although everyone else got a memo, <laughs> someone didn't receive a memo. And as a result of that targeted campaign of harassment, I have already scheduled an appointment with HR tomorrow. <laughs> and now, in a move completely unrelated to being targeted with a wardrobe malfunction here tonight, we will be revisiting the entire pro policy presentation from last month. <laughs> but perhaps slightly quicker. <laughs> BBD, y'all remember that training on the TPIA? New disclosures are required, and then this was the stuff that uh, TEA is still trying to catch up on what we already do with our safety and security officers. And then CQC, the uh, guidelines for effective integration of digital devices that Steve has already done, along with our principals and staff, DCE, handling non-Chapter 21 employees whose employment ends they changed how that goes about. All the grievance policies had pure housekeeping changes, not much. Homebrown instructions available for psychological conditions. Suddenly, I, I feel the effect of that tonight. And all of EF was entirely rewritten and split into EFA and EFB for instructional materials. And then we have two locally driven policies. We are a DOI district, and we're just simply going to announce it in policy. And we have a new addition to our DNA. Uh, T-test. And that's it. And for all those that were, were wondering how, why he went through it, you may remember we went over this last month. So this is just to, uh, the second reading tonight. So, And you're welcome that he went so fast. Just saying. All right, then. I'd like a motion that the Board of Trustees approve update 123 and policies AF local and DNA local as recommended by TASB. Pat, in a second. Gallus, all in favor? Any opposed? I see none opposed, the motion passes. And next we need to consider the Student Code of Conduct with Ms. Leanne Arthur. Good evening. So each year we bring the Student Code of Conduct for you guys to review and approve and that is what we're doing tonight. We really didn't have any changes, so it looks like last year. The legislature did not meet since last That's time, correct. right? Next right. year, eh, maybe different. I'm sure they'll have some. It course. could happen. Anyway. Right. We don't hear much about the dress code anymore, so it must be working, right? Okay, okay. you know what? <laughs> <laughs> so 
sorry. Oh, Lord. Oh, man, she did say it. She said it out loud. All right. So I'd like a motion that the Board of Trustees adopt the Student Code of Conduct for 2024 and 2025 as presented. Ryan, and a second? Second. Jerry, all in favor? Any opposed? I see none opposed. The motion passes. And now, it is time for us to reorganize our board. And I just want to say one thing. You, you all probably recognize that we just sort of march through. Every couple of years, we move someone into secretary and the others move up. And Ryan is in line for president. However, he is in school right now. And he was really, um, really wonderful that he put, he was considering the district. And so he is going to wait a couple of years and we're going to go ahead and I'd like to nominate Dallas Owen for secretary. And so we can bring our new board member into the officer lineup. And I'd like to know if there are any other nominations for secretary. All right, then if not, I, let's see, do we have to vote every single time? Yes, so if we could please uh, vote for Dallas Owen as secretary. Nope, no second is needed. So, <laughs> all right, all in favor? Any, you can vote for yourself. <laughs> You're willing, right? You're willing, right? <laughs> all right, any opposed? All right, Dallas, thank you for being willing to step in. All right, and then I would like to propose that Ryan Richardson remain vice president for the next couple of years and uh, what well, one year at a time. And uh, are there any other nominations for vice president? All right, then if we could all please vote for Ryan as vice president. Any opposed? All right, Ryan, thank you. And then now, um, can I propose? Yes, I'm going to. So I'm recommending <laughs> that Jerry McNair uh, be elected as our president to serve for this coming year. So are there any off? Okay, then if we could please vote for Jerry. <laughs> any opposed? All right, Jerry, thank you so much for stepping into this. You will enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. All right, and, and? as her first Duty. Hold on, hold on. I would like to tell everyone here, I've worked with her closely for two years as board president. Uh, she has been a great uh, advisor, uh, counselor, uh, sometimes disciplinarian, <laughs> but uh, she has served this district well and she has put in a lot of time, energy and effort and uh, she loves this district and she loves the people in it in serving uh, with her for the last two years and her being the board president. Uh, we are so fortunate that you are still a member of this board and that you've been president. So thank you for your service and thank you for what you've thank done. You. You've done well. Sorry, I interrupted you, Madam President. No, you did not. Well, that ends our meeting for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Loving this meeting. This meeting is adjourned. Hey!